The armor in The Mandalorian Season 3's latest episode managed to dodge the question about Death Watch by saying Death Watch was gone, but here on the channel, Death Watch is only getting started. We're going to do our own Death Watch by going over all of the characters of The Mandalorian Season 3 and saying on a 5-point scale from 1 to 5 how likely it is that they are going to die, with 1 being they're probably going to live and 5 being they're almost certainly going to die. I'm going to be at least putting someone at 1 and someone at 5. If I don't do that, that's just kind of a cop-out, so we're going to do this the fun way. And in the interest of not hedging even more, I am going to add some stakes to this, where for every spot I'm off from a character's actual fate, 5 being death, 1 being staying alive, I am going to donate $5 to the Ottawa Food Bank. So if I say a character is not going to die, putting them at 1, and it turns out they do die, then that's a $20 donation. And if I hedge a bit and I say that someone's a two, saying they're probably not going to die, and then they still live, that's still $5. So I'll do a video going over the uh, comparisons versus the actual fates and totaling all that up after the season is over. I'm not going to be including Grief Karga in this. I think he's pretty safe and I don't see how he'd die. Uh, so I'm going to use that as my free space. We have nine characters to go over. So I'm going to start off with someone that I think is relatively safe. Elia Kane, who I'm going to be putting at a 2. So I think there's a non-zero chance that she dies because she's already fulfilled the role of showing how the rehabilitation program works along with Pershing and the spy situation within the New Republic. But I feel like if the story is moving off of Mandalore next season, because we know the show isn't done yet, I think she's our biggest link to that, especially depending on what goes on with Gideon. And I don't think there's going to be a ton of time for super huge developments off of Mandalore. I think there will be some New Republic stuff going on, but I don't think she'll get or I don't think they'll have time to expose that she's the spy and then have her be killed. So I think she's pretty safe. I'm going to keep her at a two. Next up, we're going to go to Axe Woves Uwu, and uh, Koska Reeves. I feel like of the two, Casca is probably the most safe. So Casca hasn't really had any major plots involving her, so you could argue for that being a good reason to uh, have her as a safe character to kind of just kill off. But I feel like with Bo-Katan now in charge, having a kind of loyal deputy in Casca Reeves is going to be more important. We saw that the two of them were more close, what with her uh, still being there at the end of Season 2 while Casca was gone. Um... So I feel like there will be a bigger role for her in the future, uh, but I do think that there is going to be a Night Owl killed, and it has to be a relatively important one. So since that comes down to either her or Axe Woves, I'm going to put her... Ooh, or I'm going to put her... <laughs> I can't help myself. I'm going to put her at three. So this is a kind of tentative three, where if... Uh, she's kind of being brought up by the average that I think the Night Owls have of dying. So if Axe dies, I don't think she dies. If she dies, I don't think Axe necessarily dies. Uh, because both they still have the Bo-Katan representation for the Night Owls in the future if both happen to die. But I don't think we're getting both of them dead. So that does bring us to Axe Woves, who is going to be my first five. I think Axe is the most likely character of all of them to die. Uh, I think with Paz Vizsla presumably dying... In uh, episode seven, uh, he'd have to. It'd take a, a minor miracle for him to come back to, to the group. I think at this point, he's pretty clearly dead, as far as you can uh, say anyone's dead in Star Wars. But I think with the children of the Watch member dying in the last episode, uh, that a, ch a night owl is probably going to die in this episode. And with Axe, his story seemed to mostly be about being a kind of oppositional force almost to, uh, to Bo-Katan and kind of has been used for some of the uh, more negative interactions with the other side of the Mandalorians, both with his comments towards Din, uh, with his antagonism towards uh, Bo-Katan even, and with him being kind of the person who was set up to have the negative interactions with Paz Vizsla. Uh, there's the whole potential spy subplot where he and the armor are seen as, I think in the broader fandom, the most likely candidates to be traitors, if there are any, especially with his... Uh, with his role being a mercenary, and he's kind of really emphasized the that aspect of the Mandalorians in a season where we're talking about them getting kind of away from that. So I think he is the uh, he is my safest bet 
to put someone that is going to die. I'm locking him in as my five. So from there, I think we're going to move to the other side of that equation and go to the Children of the Watch. I've been kind of thinking throughout the second half of the season, we'd probably get a death from the Children of the Watch, one from the Night Owls, and it would probably end up being Axe Woves or the Armorer dying, uh, probably not both of them. So it was like a bit of a matrix there, but with Paz Vizlin now dead and with Axe Woves being my guess for a Night Owl death, it's kind of lowered my thoughts on the Armorer's chances of being killed. If Paz Vizsla turns out to be miraculously okay, she'll jump up my rankings a bit, but I'm going to put her at a three. So there are a few things going on with the armor that I think are interesting and which may come up in the finale. Uh, she's been under a lot of suspicion as being a potential spy or having some other nefarious motives. And I think there's uh, people aren't really sure whether we're being set up in a situation where we're supposed to think the armor is uh, worthy of respect or a kind of more nefarious character. And with Paz being dead and with there only being two or three, oh, three including Din, characters from the Children of the Watch in the first place, then it, it would seem weird to me in the same way that I don't think they'd kill off both of the Night Owls to kill both of the Children of the Watch, especially with Din being a bit more outside that. Uh, so maybe we'll address more of the uh, more cult-like elements of the Children of the Watch, but I don't really feel like we're heading in the direction, at least for the finale of this season, of having the armor be an antagonist or be killed off. I think she's probably safe, which is why she's kind of in the middle for me. I can see it going both ways, so she's at a three for me. Uh, from there, we'll go to our main pair, Din and Grogu. So with these ones, I think they're pretty safe. Grogu, I'm putting at a one. I'm not even going to explain myself there. I, I think if anyone disagrees with that, I'm going to be kind of shocked, uh, if only for the merchandise. But for Din, there has been a lot more... Uh, a lot more theorizing in the community, especially that Din might die, uh, especially after his capture at the end of last episode. And I just don't see that happening. Uh, from a more meta perspective, uh, with their desire to really rush the reunion in Book of Boba Fett, because a lot of questions have been asked directly to Favreau and Filoni about why they would have brought Grogu back the way they did, rather than waiting until a bit later, maybe in this season or maybe at the end of the season, to bring Grogu back. They see that relationship between the two as so central to the show that I don't think they would make that argument right now for bringing Grogu back just to give him a bit of extra time with Din and then kill Din off going forward. So I don't think it's impossible, uh, but I think especially with the way that they're probably going to want to expand the story where you have like kind of the, the Mandalorians on Mandalore being led by presumably Bo-Katan uh, while still having Din being able to go out on adventures. I think that's probably the most likely format for the show in the next season. Uh, so I, I think Din is safe as well. I'm going to put him at a one. I'd be very surprised if he dies, but I, I don't think it's impossible. Uh, I don't think he's as safe as Grogu, but I, I really just don't see it happening. Uh, so I think we can move on from then. If anyone really does disagree with that, I'm actually kind of interested in what people's thoughts are. Do you think Din is going to die? How, how widespread is that theory? Uh, but from there... We have three more characters to talk about, I think. And we'll do uh, the big one next, Ragnar. Uh, he's clearly a five. We know there's a mythosaur that's going to come into play somewhere. We've seen two other animals attack him in the early season. Uh, he's, we don't know where exactly he is right now, whether he's on the ship, uh, but maybe he sneaks down. He's getting eaten by the mythosaur is what I'm saying. And he, he's, the kid's dead. That leaves us with just Gideon and Bo-Katan. I think we'll talk about Gideon first. So Gideon, I don't think they're going to do the thing that they've done already where uh, you think he's dead or defeated and then he just pops back up. At the end of season one, obviously all the characters in universe thought he was dead, but then we saw him uh, break out of the tie with the Darksaber. At the end of season two, everyone in universe and out of universe thought he was captured. I don't think anyone really thought, uh, as far as the fans go, that Gideon would be staying in custody for the, the rest of time, that that was the end of Gideon's story. Uh, but... I do think that we'll see either his full defeat or we'll end in a situation where both we as the audience and the characters in the show know that he's escaped to fight another day. And I, I think that's what's going to happen. Uh, I don't think we've seen the end of him. We do know that there's the still the, the Jedi element of the trifecta that he was setting up in this last episode of the Mandalorians, Cloners, and Jedi. The Jedi have been a big focus of the research, 
and we just don't know how that's going to play out in the show yet. If that Jedi stuff comes into play in a big way in the finale, I could see that making him jump up my rankings while I'm watching. Uh, but for now, I don't think we're seeing the end of Gideon's story. I think he'll probably end up getting kicked off of Mandalore and will end on that being the high note that the Mandalorians have Mandalore back. But I still think Gideon will be out there. So I'm going to put him at a two. Uh, that's going to be... Or you know what? I'm going to put him at a three. I don't think he's quite down as low as, say, Casca. I think it's more in the armor level. Uh, that I think that's fair. So that leaves us with just Bo-Katan. I will say up front, I don't think Bo-Katan is going to die. I think she'll continue being a major character and probably go on to continue leading the Mandalorians. But to kind of devil's advocate a bit, because uh, I did make this prediction as kind of my Hail Mary one on Tapcalf transmissions when me and Eckhart Slatter were giving some of our finale predictions. Uh, I threw her out as my like uh, random name of a character that could die. And I could see it happening if she's meant to be the person that unites the Mandalorians or helps Din to unite the Mandalorians and takes that leadership role at first, uh, but isn't in place to rule the Mandalorians going forward. And I could see that being something that kind of makes sense with the evolution of her character, where we're seeing a lot about how she's grown from her past experiences and attempts to lead the Mandalorians. Uh, she's come a long way from her mistakes during the Clone Wars and how she was backing Death Watch, how she was backing Pre Vizsla, and honestly was involved in causing a lot of the problems the Mandalorians are facing now. Uh, but I think some of the focus on that does remove some of the responsibility from a lot of the other Mandalorians that are still around. Because uh, a lot of the surviving ones weren't exactly the pacifist Mandalorians of Satine. They're kind of the warrior cells that were spread around, some of which were former Death Watch, uh, some of which weren't. But if you look at even the Mandalorians and Rebels, like Sabine's family, they were former Death Watch. So it's not like anyone left at this point is going to be fully innocent of the kind of divisions and the, the negative actions that uh, Bo-Katan was involved in. And I think we're seeing a lot that she realizes a lot of that now. Uh, and I think some of her concerns that she was talking to Din about in, uh, in The Spies have really highlighted that. So is it a situation where she's learned from it and she's going to take that experience to help lead them into the future? Or is it a situation where she's learned that she has used that knowledge to help bring together the Mandalorians and then she's just going to die in a very Star Wars way of uh, almost a redemption for that kind of stuff in the past. But I don't think that's what the show is setting up for. So while I have that... Uh, that outline for how it could happen, I still think she is going at a one or a two. Uh, so I'll, I'll probably put her at a one as well, honestly, because there's still so much to do with bringing the Mandalorians together. And I'm glad that they did highlight that those issues still did exist rather than just kind of sweeping them under the rug, which it kind of felt like they were doing in some of how they were getting the Mandalorians back together in the earlier parts of the series or the season. So I think that... Her story in the next season, for example, would be more about dealing with some of those conflicts within the Mandalorians. Well, we do have uh, what I said earlier, where Din goes off and does some of the other adventures. Uh, but that does it for my thoughts on the Mandalorian Death Watch. Uh, I'm going to try to do this with a few of the other shows on big episode milestones, whether it's just finales or something else, if you guys enjoy it. Uh, but if... Uh, Anyone else who gets put at a five, we're calling that the Axe Wove scale now, I guess. And I'm going to try not to ooh ooh after it. But thank you so much for watching. We are going to be doing a live reaction tonight, myself and Eckhart's Ladder, starting at 2.45 a.m. Eastern time. We're going to give some more of our predictions as we wait for the episode to come up, give a little bit of talk about the season, and then we're going to be watching live along with whoever wants to show up for that. So the stream should be scheduled already for that, or it will be a little bit later in the day, depending on when I go to bed. But... Hope to see some of you there. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this season of The Mandalorian. And I hope to see you just next time in general, I guess, because my usual outro doesn't work right now.